Welcome to our program, The China Briefing. Today, we delve into the pressing issue of drug trafficking in the South Pacific, where small island nations are increasingly becoming transit points for illicit substances heading to Australia and the US. With Fiji reporting a staggering 3.5 tons of methamphetamine seized this year, the region's weak policing capabilities have drawn the attention of traffickers. In response, Australia and the US are stepping up their maritime law enforcement training to combat this growing problem. In another significant development, Swiss carbon capture company Climeworks is on the lookout for investors in Hong Kong to fund their ambitious projects, estimated to cost between $2 billion and $3 billion. Co-founder Christoph Jebold has highlighted the importance of securing long-term investors as they aim to capture millions of tons of carbon by 2030 and 2050. This move showcases a shift towards sustainability and integrating carbon credits into business strategies, reflecting a growing awareness of environmental issues. Finally, we turn our attention to the art world, where Hong Kong artist Chris Huan Sinkan has unveiled his solo exhibition I Do Nothing Every Day in Vancouver. Featuring heartfelt paintings of his family and dogs, Huan's work captures the beauty of daily life and the passage of time. His unique blend of Western and traditional Chinese techniques invites viewers to reflect on the significance of ordinary moments. The exhibition runs until November 9, so be sure to check it out. Please stay tuned for more detailed coverage. Nikkei Asia reports that the South Pacific island nations are increasingly being exploited as transit points for drug trafficking aimed at Australia and the US. Recent police actions in Fiji have revealed a concerning rise in methamphetamine-related arrests, with authorities seizing 3.5 tons of the drug this year alone. The police commissioner of Tonga has noted attempts by gangs to recruit vulnerable young men into their operations, highlighting the growing drug problem in the region. The geographical isolation and limited naval capabilities of these nations make them attractive to traffickers, prompting both the US and Australia to enhance policing efforts through training initiatives and cooperative maritime law enforcement agreements. As the drug crisis escalates, some nations are even contemplating the introduction of capital punishment for drug-related offences, with officials expressing alarm over the emerging crimes fueled by addiction. The South China Morning Post reveals that Climeworks, a Swiss company renowned for its carbon capture technology, is seeking investors in Hong Kong for ambitious projects costing between $2 billion and $3 billion. The co-founder, Christoph Jebold, emphasizes the need for long-term investors willing to commit to the future of carbon capture, which is crucial for combating climate change. Climeworks has already established the world's largest direct air capture plant in Iceland, with plans for additional facilities in the US and beyond. The company's goal is to reach an annual carbon capture capacity of 2 million tonnes by 2030 and 1 billion tonnes by 2050, but significant investment and market stability are essential for the success of these initiatives. The interest from Hong Kong investors reflects a growing recognition of the importance of sustainable practices in business strategies. In another feature from the South China Morning Post, Hong Kong artist Chris Huan Sinkan showcases his latest exhibition in Vancouver, titled I Do Nothing Every Day, which captures the beauty of everyday life through paintings of his family and pets. Huan, who has garnered recognition for blending Western and traditional Chinese art styles, reflects on how his work chronicles the passage of time and personal experiences. His recent relocation to the UK has influenced his artistic perspective, leading him to explore new themes and settings in his paintings. During his visit to Vancouver, he was struck by the city's slower pace of life compared to Hong Kong, which inspired him to appreciate the mundane moments that shape our lives. Huan's work serves as a personal record of his family's growth and the shared experiences that resonate universally, inviting viewers to contemplate how they perceive the world around them. Nikkei Asia reports on a concerning trend in China where women of childbearing age are receiving persistent phone calls from community workers inquiring about their pregnancy plans. Lizzie, a young woman from Fujian province, expressed her frustration after being repeatedly asked if she was pregnant since her marriage last September. This intrusive practice reflects a broader government initiative to monitor fertility rates, as China's birth rate has plummeted in recent years. Grassroots workers, often linked to local government offices, gather information from newly married couples and new mothers to encourage childbearing. 
While some community officials deny feeling pressure to promote childbirth, the overall atmosphere of scrutiny has left many women feeling uncomfortable and pressured. The South China Morning Post features insights from Susan Thornton, a retired U.S. diplomat, who believes the Taiwan issue is the only significant factor that could trigger a major conflict between the U.S. and China. She highlights the complexities of U.S.-China relations, noting that while there are ongoing high-level exchanges, tensions remain high over various issues, including trade and technology. Thornton emphasizes the importance of clear communication between the two nations to prevent misunderstandings, especially regarding Taiwan. She warns that poor communication could exacerbate the already precarious situation and advocates for increased dialogue and cooperation to manage the competition between the two powers effectively. In a heartwarming account covered by the South China Morning Post, Tom Hardy's son, Louis Thomas Hardy, made a rare appearance alongside his father at the premiere of Venom, The Last Dance. The 16-year-old bears a striking resemblance to his father, with soft blue eyes and sharp cheekbones. Tom Hardy has often credited his son as a significant influence in his career, revealing that Louis inspired him to take on the role of Venom because of his son's enthusiasm for the character. Hardy describes Louis as his toughest critic, appreciating his son's honest feedback on his performances. This father-son relationship showcases a deep bond, with Hardy expressing pride in his role as a father and the positive impact Louis has had on his life and career. SCMP opinion highlights the significance of British firms in Hong Kong's economic landscape, particularly in light of recent geopolitical tensions and US criticisms. Xia Baolong, Beijing's top official for Hong Kong affairs, has urged major British companies like Jardine Matheson and HSBC to enhance the international community's understanding of Hong Kong, aiming to boost investor confidence amid a decline in foreign corporate presence. These companies, with their rich histories intertwined with the city, embody resilience and continuity, serving as a reassuring presence for investors. As the number of foreign firms with regional headquarters in Hong Kong has decreased, Xi's meetings reflect a strategic move to reaffirm Hong Kong's status as an international financial hub and to signal a commitment to strengthening ties with the UK and other regions in response to US pressure. The South China Morning Post discusses the strategic framework for Hong Kong's development as outlined in a recent Communist Party resolution, which aims to leverage the one country, two systems principle to enhance the city's role as a global center for finance, trade, and talent. The resolution identifies three key advantages, security, the unique benefits of its dual systems, and unwavering support from the central government. With improvements in governance and safety, Hong Kong is positioned to attract global enterprises and talent, while its robust financial infrastructure continues to thrive. The article emphasizes the importance of internationalization, integration, and innovation as critical objectives for Hong Kong's high-quality development, advocating for deeper ties with the Greater Bay Area and enhancing its status as an international tech hub. By fostering a favorable business environment and promoting exchanges, Hong Kong aims to shine brightly on the global stage, showcasing its resilience and potential for growth. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO Brief via email.